Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at how we can paint the faces for our army painted miniatures. This is a different style to the typical thing you might see from GW with a base coat and a wash, but we think it's well worthwhile and worth that tiny bit of extra time. In part one, I'm going to cover a recipe for Caucasian skin. For this recipe, I'm going to use Vallejo Panzerace's Light Rust, a GW or Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone, Vallejo Model Color Basic Skin Tone, Scale 75 Black Leather, and Vallejo Model Color Black. You can see what these colors look like, so you don't necessarily need to go out and get these exact ones, but you can see the differences between them. They're all on my wet palette, and I'm thinning them down by just dipping my brush into my water pot and popping it on there. So I've got a very, very thin mix at the bottom and then neat paint at the top. And then I'll work and mix that around as we carry on. Now I'm going to film this video in real time the whole way through, which is why it's slightly longer than our normal ones. But I thought this was valuable uh, to give you an idea of how long this process will take. Sometimes when we talk about our army painting, people say, oh, that's going to take way too long or, you know, I can't get it done in that time. We believe that the time you can save when you're army painting on things like your main colour using your airbrush and then using uh, known recipes for certain go-to things buys you time to spend a little extra on the key features such as faces and bases. So we started off by base coating straight over Chaos Black Primer with the Cadian Flesh Tone. You can see it's thinned down. I'm going to do a second coat. You see I'm not being too careful here. And we'll see this is really simple on a Space Marine model because typically it'll just be a sergeant model or a captain or something like that. Uh, and actually in a, a lot of uh, sci-fi or 40k uh, ranges, there's not a huge amount of, of skin on show. Uh, a little bit more when you play fantasy games. Uh, and for instance, when I've painted my Marauders for my Chaos Army, uh, I've used this recipe, but when I've been using it all over them, I actually use my airbrush to get down the majority of the paint and then go with my brush for detailing at the end. So this is the third coat. The reason I'm keeping it thin is because I don't want to obscure any of the details, but I also want to get us a nice smooth base coat to work from. Could you have airbrushed this straight on? Yes, absolutely. And would I? Yes, absolutely. But I thought it was important to show this if you don't have an airbrush. And one final coat of the flesh tone. We don't need 100% coverage on this because we are going to be working over the top of it, uh, reinforcing the shadows and reinforcing the highlights. But this gives us a good place to work from. The only thing that's happening between things is me hair drying, okay? So our first shadow I'm going to mix up using the light rust and the Cadian flesh tone. I'm going to use that little mix in the middle there. This is thinned to slightly thinner than I've done with the flesh tone. Uh, and if I'm honest, this first application, it's too thin. Um, this is a thin glaze I've used here. And one of the reasons we approach it differently to your typical GW star where you paint it a base color and then you wash it is because when you wash it with a color you're just going to make the recesses darker and um, we don't think that's the nicest effect that you can get when painting faces because it's not necessarily how the light and the shadow works on a face. So to begin with I'm just looking at all those vertical uh, facings effectively on the head and I'm just darkening them down with this color mix. Now go in here with a slightly thicker consistency of exactly the same colour. And now you can actually see it starting to make a difference. We're still using quite thin coats of paint, 
So that means I haven't got too much on my brush. So I mix my brush in the paint and then I wipe off the excess. This means that the paint won't flood off my brush and go all over the miniature. Done the vertical surfaces. And now I'm just gonna start working it in around those sort of cracks around his eyes and his nose and then his little furious space marine brow. So I've had the hairdryer on him again. Now I've got my Cadian flesh tone again and I'm just giving a couple more coats on the top of the head because there was still a little bit of the primer showing through so you've got this sort of odd you know um, weird grey effect. And I'm just going to make sure that those upward facing horizontal surfaces, so the top of his cheekbone there, down towards the top of his mouth, make sure that they're lighter. So where I glazed over that dark colour, if I've got any of that there, I get rid of it at this stage. Because again, as the light's going to be shining down, it's going to be hitting and reflecting off those upward facing surfaces. For his lips and the inside of his mouth, I've just used the light rust colour on its own. And with that same paint, I'm just going to focus on those darker creases on his face. So under his nose, uh, either side of his nose, up in his eye sockets, that type of thing. What's important with this, you have a brush with a decent point on it. Don't forget his ears, like I do later on in this video. And the nice thing is, is because we're working with relatively thin paint at times on this, generally you're not going to ruin anything in one go. It's still important to try and be deliberate so we don't get too much build up of paint across the model and obscure any details or get a nasty finish. I picked this head in particular because he hasn't got too many bionics or anything on him so we can really paint nearly all of the face. The vast majority of Space Marine faces aren't like this so you haven't got to paint anywhere near as much anyway. And just start building up where his lips and his tongue is. Do you want that to be darker? Again, reinforcing those creases so you can see already as we're going along we're never trying to do any single stage in one step in one layer of paint now to further reinforce the shadows I'm going to take a little bit of the black leather and mix it in with a light rust and take off the excess And now I start to glaze this into the areas I want to be much darker. If you want to have a look at another video where we talk about glazing quite a lot, check out our power swords. It's exactly the same idea. We're going to move our brush towards the shadows where we want it to get darker. So we'll do his eye sockets there. This guy's got quite sharp cheekbones, so I'll go and shade in under those. So you see there with the brush moving upwards towards the shadow. Sure we get plenty in his eye sockets. And because we're using such thin paint, 
it's going to dry fairly quickly. So whereas before I was having to go off camera and put the hairdryer on him because I was working on fairly quick stages, at this stage, because we are slowly manipulating him now, how he looks, by the time you've moved all the way around the head, the area you started on is going to be dry. So you can just keep working on it. Hopefully, especially in the center of his head and on his left temple there, you can see how we're really starting to get some differences in tone across him. It's usually at this step, it starts looking really cool. And when we're painting faces on these 32mm gaming models, it's always going to be exaggerated. We can't be ultra realistic with it often simply by the fact of the sculpts aren't realistic enough for us to do that. But we can still try and apply some of that theory that we would if we were painting a larger model, a larger scale model. So I'm just using that black leather there on its own to darken the eye sockets and to darken his tongue as well. So we're about 10 minutes or so in, I think now. It's already looking pretty nice. So let's move on to the highlights. I'm gonna take my Cadian flesh tone and my Vallejo basic skin tone make a little mix and now I'm just going to focus on those areas as I said that are horizontal or as near to horizontal and upward facing as possible so those that are going to catch the light so that's his nose that's his um, upper lip or the area between his upper lip and his nose top of his cheekbones there you can see I'm using ever so slightly thicker paint bottom of his jawline and his chin And I won't do quite as much on the right hand side of his face because I'm picturing that that one's going to be, if I have my light source at the top right as we look at the model, that side will be slightly darker. Then we work on his brow. And I've added a little of that highlight to the top of his head. You can see it's quite rough at the minute, but I'm going to smooth that out in a moment. And I'll also fix what on earth I've done to his tongue there, which makes it look like it's lolling out of his mouth or something. We can fix that in a bit. Or oh, well now, in fact. So all I've done there is gone in with the light rust colour again. A bit too much on the paintbrush there, touch that off on the glove. Just bring his lips back. So now we continue to brighten up the top of his head. Slightly thinner mix of the highlight colour there. He's starting to get some real character to him now. And now I've gone in with just the pure uh, basic skin tone. Oh, bit of beanie there, it's all right. This is by far the trickiest thing I've had to film, uh, working with a new camera and on such a small piece. Uh, so please forgive me if you get a bit of beanie in there occasionally and uh, if we do move out of frame every so often. Uh, I just felt it was key to try and get as close as we possibly could to the model so you could see where those brush strokes were going.
and here we start to blend in the top of the head. So I've got a very, very thin down cadian flesh tone, just working in that middle area between the two colours. doing exactly the same on his cheeks here. The transition between the highlight and the shadow on his cheekbones was a little bit too dramatic for my taste. I wanted to soften it down slightly. So we've just glazed a little bit of that Cadian flesh tone in between the two. Now if we just look down on him straight from above, all I'm looking for here is have I caught all of those really prominent upward facing surfaces? And if there's any I've missed, just fill it in. So the bit I managed to do off camera there was uh, between his eyebrows and below his angry forehead. I'd missed a highlight, so I went and put it in. And again, I'm just bringing the highlight on his eyebrows there further towards the front of his brow. And those little folds, uh, which I assume meant to be his eyelids, his uh, lower eyelids and then his top lid there and you can see just with those tiny little additions we've brought an awful lot more definition to the face And I think it's at this point I realise I'd forgotten his ear. All I've done between the last uh, video clip and this one is painted in around the, the the basically the armor pieces, so the black pieces on him. And now I'm just painting his ear in. Uh, I'm conscious this video is running a lot longer than our normal ones. Uh, I didn't think you really needed to see me uh, painting in the. Uh, a black paint over his uh, over his armor. And again, I apologize if we move out of shot just occasionally on this clip. But hopefully, you'll be able to see all the key points that I want to talk about. I've just taken a little bit of ivory, so an off-white color. I'm just going to paint his teeth in on this sculpt. He's actually got his, his upper row of teeth on the model. And we don't want to go pure white. Uh, just go slightly off white. That's looking nice. And you can see for his eyeballs, We've just painted it black. Final bit of colour on his lips. With the eyeballs, it's uh, a real challenge sometimes, I think, to decide what level of detail you go for on them. I've often painted the whites in on my gaming model uh, eyes as well. So you, the, the I'll have the full, the full pupil, so you get the, the pupil and the iris. I just don't think it's worth it, if I'm honest. Um, and the whole point of army painting is that we get something done and everything that we do on the model is sort of bang for your buck. 
Uh, and actually, I think at the scale we play at and for uh, a high level gaming army, I think just painting the eyes with black is absolutely fine. And on the vast majority of sculpts, um, you're not going to see the eyes as clearly as you can on this model. And this is probably where I'm just fiddling now. Probably stopped about a minute ago. But it's something I really enjoy painting. I think that's probably because it's the area on a model I'll often spend the most time on an individual element uh, when I'm army painting. So it's quite nice just to relax and take a little time. The head on the right here I painted immediately before this video as a warm up for it and the reason it's got a slightly smoother finish to it is simply because I wasn't having to film myself doing it. So if we take out the filming I'd say the left head took approximately 15 to 18 minutes to paint which I think is a really good return for the effect it's going to give you on your models. I will be covering some recipes for different skin tones in some upcoming videos. So if you've enjoyed this hit the like button and if you want to see more from us hit subscribe and that little notification bell. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. And I'll see you next time.